Hey, what's going on everybody? This is George with the Network Tribe. And today I'm coming back with part two of the SD-WAN discussion that we had last time. If you missed part one, I would suggest going back and watching that video first. That way this video can go ahead and tie itself together a lot more efficiently. So before I start, I just wanted to say thank you to all the love that I got from the last video. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more content like this and leave a like if you like the video. Uh, anything would be greatly appreciated. All right, so in the last video I left off saying that what I wanted to talk about next is what makes SD-WAN so software defined, right? We left off talking about uh, leaving this first portion of uh, the technology kind of out of it. And now let's talk about what actually software defined means. So I'm going to start this discussion by discussing the differences between the control plane and the data plane, because here is what truly defines what software defined networking is. It's oftentimes, I think, a misrepresentation to say that software defined networking or software defined means that it's all done through a GUI. GUI does not equal software defined. And that's something that I think is very important to illustrate. What defines that is based on the control plane and the data plane and the separation of those things. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about what, what I mean by that. So if we look at a previous type of router, there is a 7600. And I've seen this particular example showcased a few times and I think it is a great way to start the discussion. So I'm gonna borrow that. There's this Catalyst 7600 and this was essentially a chassis based uh, router, right? Uh, kind of similar to what an ASR would be like today. And essentially, the we had some line cards here, right? And then we had some of those line cards were IOM modules. IOM meaning uh, they had interfaces on them, so Ethernet interfaces. Right? They could be copper, they could be fiber. And then we also had a couple of other modules that we call the control plane modules or the CPM modules. Today we usually call these just simply line cards and supervisors, right? And on the back of, these, uh, of this chassis is essentially a fabric, uh, fabric module in the back plane that was essentially pinning all of the IOM modules to the control plane module. So let me draw a quick key here. <clears throat> so everything that's blue is going to equal a control plane. Control plane. And what is the control plane in the 7600? In this case, the control plane is the control plane module or the two control plane modules, right? And the IOM modules are the data plane. So for all intents and purposes, the IOM modules really don't have a database to host where routes are going in and out. That database is located within the CPN. So it's within the control plane. The control plane essentially equals the routing information base, right? So the IOM then refers to the CPM and then it refers to con the control plane module to say, if I wanted to get to a.8.8.8, .8 which interface do I need to go out of? And in order for that line card to learn that information, it would need to refer to the control plane module. And then over here on the back, all that would ride through what we would call a fabric. And while this worked pretty great for, for many years, there are quite a few things that would limit us here. Um, the first thing is uh, limited scale. And so a lot of this goes back to scalability. So why is it limited? Well, for one, back in the days, the fabric was just completely limited, right? It's the back plane of the chassis. You couldn't upgrade it unless you completely bought a new chassis. 
Uh, recently with some of the newer switches now, you can actually have fabric modules that can upgrade the bandwidth of the switches. But back then that wasn't the case. But take this one example of this one router and scale it out to maybe a thousand or 6,000 routers out there. That means that you would have to go to 6,000 control plane modules and do the routing on each one of those, right? So you multiply this by 6,000 routing tables. That's a lot of CPU. That's a lot of resources that are being taken up. <clears throat> so there's a requirement for the, the, for the control plane module per chassis. Right? And then we talked about the fabric, fabric limited growth. Or I should say fabric is fixed because it can't even scale at all. So these are some of the problems here. And more than anything, it's around the consumption of CPU and memory resources for all the thousands of routers that you're gonna have in your environment. So rather than doing it this way, we wanted to find a way to centralize that routing in some other type of architecture. So let's go ahead and draw out a software defined architecture. Uh, let's go ahead and start first off with the SD-WAN architecture that Cisco has. So if we look at an architecture that we have, we have first the routers. These are what we call the edges. Uh, these could be either what we call V edges or C edges. So Cisco acquired a company called Miptela and that's where the V edge terminology comes from. C edge is essentially the Vitella software on top of Cisco, um, Cisco routers. So the ISR or the ASR. You'll notice I have these in green because effectively what we're doing here is each router is becoming a data plane or an IOM module. So this is essentially becoming like an IOM. So we've taken care of the IOM piece, the data plane. Now let's take care of what we need to run the control plane. And these are what we call the vSmarts in the Cisco SD-WAN world. These could be a couple of them, three or four is usually pretty typical. And the vSmarts control the um, control plane of all of the IOM. So rather than having to have a control plane in each one of your routers, you just have a few of them for your entire SD-WAN solution. So this is controlling and, and, and propagating all of the routing information to all of the routers on the SD-WAN. So then this is all managed through a separate box that we call the vManage. And the vManage is simply the management uh, plane essentially. So this is co completely outside of the vSmart and anything else. The user goes into vManage to essentially manage everything from the control plane to adding and provisioning all of the routers. This is all usually put up in the cloud and provisioned for you by Cisco. You can also do some of this on-prem as well. And so now what leaves us here is how do we connect these two together? And so again, we're not gonna do this through some kind of fabric in a uh, back of a chassis, right? Obviously, we're gonna need to do this through some kind of transport. And this is again, where the magic of SD-1 happens. It could literally be any type of transport and as many transports as you want. And you can control the traffic through all those different transports. So um, one of them being, of course, just the internet. You can do MPLS or maybe a more critical uh, type of traffic. And then as your backup, you can do 4G, you can do LTE, or you can do 5G in the future as well, right? And so regardless of what traffic it is or if it's all, all of the different transports, this is all connected securely through another thing that we call the V-bond that I'm not gonna go into 
in this particular uh, video. But essentially, this is how the fabric is established between the edges and the V-Smart. So now another great thing about SD-WAN is that now we can actually do uh, some technologies that previously would take uh, a little bit more knowledge to go ahead and deploy across the network. So if you guys are familiar with uh, VRFs, VRFs are virtual routing and forwarding instances. Essentially what these are, are virtual routers. So you have one router, you can carve up this router into multiple virtual routers. Now, why would you want to do this? You might want to create a VRF if you want to separate certain types of devices on the network or certain types of users. So for instance, let's say you wanted to have an enterprise VN or VRF. I'm going to call this a VN or a virtual network because or VPN, I'll call it a VPN because that is a term that's used in SD-WAN specifically. This can be interchanged with VRF or VN for virtual network. In the case of SD-WAN, we use VPN. So we have an enterprise VPN, and this is for all of your enterprise and campus uh, devices and routes would be hosted here. Now let's say you had an IoT network that you wanted to be completely separate from your enterprise environment. And you do this because you don't want potentially some kind of uh, compromised IoT device to then leak and compromise your internal network, right? So you create a new VRF or v VPN, my apologies, a VPN, just for your IoT. This is its own separate routing table, again, controlled by the same uh, vSmart in the control plane. And you can have another one here for maybe guest. So do one more for VPN for guest. And so all of these are going to be across all of your all of your C edges and V edges, and all of that is done through the vManage and propagated out through and all of your different routers. Right? And all the routing, uh, all the VRFs and VPNs are done and, and centralized through the vSmart. And of course, this is all done through a graphical user interface in the vManage, which makes it extra easy to use. So lastly, I'm gonna go over the advantages of implementing an SD-WAN as opposed to a traditional WAN. So the advantages, the first one, you have to manage less routing tables, essentially. Uh, rather than having to manage thousands of routing tables individually, here you just manage three or four of them. Next is the fact that we're able to use whichever transport that we want to, right? So regardless of whether we want to go over MPLS, or we want to save some money and use the internet and use 4G LTE as backup, the transport for the fabric is completely agnostic. It doesn't matter where it goes through or how it goes through it at all. And then we also have something I touched on the last video is application traffic manipulation. So because of the fact that you can use multiple transports you can then select certain types of applications that may be run through the cloud to go ahead and go straight out to the internet as opposed to running through your MPLS. This would allow you as an, an enterprise to save money on your MPLS or your dark fiber links and simply use the internet as a transport for applications that might exist in the cloud or maybe in AWS. And then lastly, something that we touched on just a little bit is around the security aspect of it. So. Uh, the secure connectivity between the routers and between the vSmart and, and the vManage. All of this is done through uh, DTLS, it's completely encrypted, regardless of whether it's going through the internet or whether it's going through 4G or MPLS. So this is a very quick overview 
of the SD-WAN solution from a Cisco perspective. I hope that you guys found this useful and informative and you guys can take that and use that in your everyday conversations in IT. Again, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe and leave a like for me if you like this video and found it useful. Other than that, have a great day guys and take care.